Hi, uh, I'm Miriam Beiber and I'm a PhD student in the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and also collaborating with the Image Processing Group here in, in UPC. And I'm doing things of computer vision, of object detection and also image segmentation. So first I'm going to talk about object detection. So what's the task of object detection? This is one of the most traditional tasks in computer vision and consists that given an image, uh, an algorithm that does object detection has to identify the different objects in the image and surround them with a bonding box and also assign a class category that defines uh, each of the objects. So in this case, if here there's uh, a dog, so you should need, for instance, a bonding box around the dog and also a, a category saying, okay, this is a dog. So uh, you're already familiar with image classification. This means a problem that given an image, you assign just a single class category. For instance, if there's a dog in the whole image, the category would be a dog. So we can also think about object detection as a classification uh, task. So imagine that instead of thinking about a whole image, uh, we define different localizations inside um, an image and uh, do a classification problem. So for instance, if we define this uh, window here and we say, okay, is there a cat, a dog, or um, Back and here the answer should be no. And then we could move this, uh, this window across the whole image and ask the same question to your classifier. So we move here, there's no object, and here, for instance, there's the cat, so the classifier should, should say yes. Uh, what happens? That if we want to uh, give a bonding box to the dog, for instance, you see that this bonding box is uh, too small, it doesn't have the correct scale. So this uh, complicates if we cast the object detection as uh, simply classification because there are too many positions to evaluate and also there are too many aspect ratios or scales of possible objects that may be in the scene. So the thing is, if your classifier is fast enough, you can go for it and analyze all these possibilities, but um, normally what it's done is to choose wisely which regions to analyze. So, and this intensifies even more with comnets. So nowadays, the state of the art of object detection, it's with comnets. And you know that uh, it requires a lot of computation, so this is very intensive. And if you had to analyze all the positions, all the scales, all the aspect ratios, this would be too much. So the thing is uh, to choose the regions more wisely, and I will talk about this later. So as you already know, for deep learning, you need uh, labeled databases in order to train your algorithms. So for Object detections, these are some of the most popular data sets that contain images with annotations of bonding boxes around uh, the different objects. So Pascal is uh, very popular, it has 20 categories and then there are, uh, there's uh, Coco and ImageNet that are much bigger. So the object detection algorithms can be distinguished between two different types. One is called proposal-based and the other is proposal-free methods, okay? So the proposal based uh, is uh, inspired a little bit by the idea that I told you that instead of analyzing all the regions of your image and all possible scales or aspect ratios, uh, to choose more wisely which regions to analyze first. So that's why it's called proposal based. Because first there's, there's this uh, stage that there's an algorithm, or it could be a network, for instance, that uh, it's a region proposal algorithm that proposes some regions in the image that will uh, likely uh, contain a, an object inside it. So these kind of algorithms look for prominent regions in the image or um, blobby regions or pixels, for instance, that are very similar uh, between them, and these could be possible objects. So this is like a, a prior for our detector, so some regions that are already good, that these could be objects, and then we need a second stage that will take these proposals, analyze them, improve them if necessary, and classify them. So you obtain the final detection. So some of the most uh, traditional um, region proposals algorithms are the ones that I'm uh, showing here, so selective search, um, MCG, and they both consist of starting with a super uh, pixel partition of your image, so the, the pixels that have the same value and that are neighbors, you already aggregate them from the image, and then you start merging those super pixels, for instance, that are uh, similar, and you start doing this in a hierarchical manner, so if you think like a hierarchy of regions, like the one you can see here, okay? So you see that all these regions Okay, yeah, here. So you see that all these regions uh, could be possible positions where there might be an object. So what you can do is take these regions, uh, place a bonding box around them, and these are already your object proposals. So this would be the first stage of these kind of algorithms. So uh, the first approach uh, that applied uh, CNNs for object detection is region CNN that you can see the pipeline here. So it consists of basically you have your input image and you extract object proposals from it. So with these algorithms that I already told you. 
uh, in the term of like 2,000 proposals, for instance. And then for each of these proposals, you extract uh, CNN features. So this was the first time that CNN features were used for the object detection task. And once you have all, all your proposals described, you train a super vector machine to classify the different proposals. So this was the first time that comnets were, were used for this task. What happens? That uh, what we would like to obtain is an output like the first one, so just a single bonding box surrounding uh, each of the objects of your image. But actually this is not happening because you're analyzing 2,000 proposals. So this is very important that with proposal-based methods you need a post-processing step to uh, filter those uh, proposals that, for instance, are redundant or that are not good enough because maybe some of these 2,000, well, of course, uh, most of the 2,000 will not contain any object of your image. So this... Um, this procedure is called first non-maximum suppression and score threshold. So this means that uh, first you check the overlap between the bounding boxes. If there are two that have a lot of overlap, so you just take the one that has a higher confidence of being an object. And you also have to check which is the confidence of the bounding boxes because if it's low, you discard those, those proposals. So here you can see a graph of, uh, this is the metric used for this kind of problem, the mean average precision. And this, are, uh, this shows uh, which was the improvement achieved thanks to convolutional neural networks. So the first two um, approaches were without them. And then with region CNN, um, it was when comnets were applied. And you see that there was a, an, an increase of performance that is considerable. Uh, and since then, comnets are uh, the state of the art for this task. So what happens with this first approach that I told you? So there are several problems. First of all, that uh, if you have, for instance, 2,000 proposals and you have to extract features for each of uh, these proposals, this could be very slow, okay? And also that uh, you are um, just, you have your proposals, you put them, you feed them into a convolutional neural network, you extract features, and then from these features, you train a, a super vector machine. So actually, you're not training the CNN features for the object detection task directly. So uh, you'll see now that these same people that did region CNN did another version that it's called faster CNN uh, when they, they improved these, these two issues, okay? So the first thing is exactly this. Instead of forwarding each proposal into the network, which is very slow, what they did is given uh, the whole image, they extract features for all the image at once, and then if they want to describe just a region of the image, they just crop on top of the features, and that's the description for that region. What happens? That if different proposals have different sizes, then your descriptors will have different sizes as well, and we don't want that if we have, for instance, fully connected layers in our, in our network. So uh, it's important also that they introduce the concept of uh, ROI pooling. Uh, ROI pooling means uh, a region of interest, uh, doing a, a pooling. So the thing is that you have your descriptor that has a, a size that is variable, and you need a fixed size descriptor in order to fit this into fully connected layers, okay? So what it's done is simply uh, you place, uh, for instance, if, if this is your descriptor here uh, that has this size, and you actually want a descriptor that is just five uh, by five, you place a grid on top of it, and at each position of the grid, you do a, a maximum. And that's uh, the way to obtain a fixed size descriptor, okay? And this can be fed into a fully connected layer. So the other issue was that for uh, region CNN, they use super vectors machines. Uh, and here what they did is to remove this stage and simply add multi-layer perceptrons to do the classification step, and also to do some uh, bonding box regressor. This means that if your proposal has uh, certain coordinates, uh, this, you can train it to improve your coordinates and to be more suited for the object, for instance. And like this, we can train it uh, altogether, so the features of the CNN will be uh, learned uh, for this task. So here you can see the improvement. So if this is called faster CNN, it's because it was faster. And you see that for the training time, it really achieved a higher, like a speed up, and even more in test time per image. So uh, this was the, the main contribution of this work. But the thing is that still we need some algorithm that uh, computes these object proposals, these 2,000 object proposals at the beginning. So we, we should also consider that time. So this is uh, the motivation that uh, these people uh, needed for doing another approach that like it's called faster CNN to improve exactly this. So this is the same as faster CNN. So this is the same algorithm. You have the image, you extract features, then you have a proposal network that proposes some regions. You cut, uh, the, the re like you cut the features on top of your descriptor of the whole image, 
and then you feed this into your network to obtain class probabilities and the bounded box regressor, okay? But the difference is that instead of relying on an external algorithm for, ex uh, for obtaining these proposals, uh, they did in the same network. So from the, from the features obtained from the image, they add a network called region proposal network that does exactly this. So that proposes some regions uh, that will be the ones that will be used for the second part of the network that is the traditional cluster CNN and, and train your, your classifier. So the thing, this is very important, so this is proposal based because you are uh, training a network that uh, proposes some regions and then you will just train the second branch with the best proposals of the first network. Okay, so you choose the better regions and, and, and that's, uh, those are the ones that you will be using for the second network. So how did they do this region proposal network? So this was uh, one of the first times that uh, CNNs were used also for uh, proposing uh, regions of, of interest of the image. And what they did basically is um, they trained a network that uh, given an image, if you consider for instance a grid on top of the image, okay, so different positions of the image, they trained it, whether, uh, like a convolutional neural network that, um, well actually a neural network that said at each position whether there was an object or not, okay. so. The thing is that this should, this is too simple, uh, only if there's a, an object there or not. So the thing, because there are many different types of objects. So there are objects that have, uh, that are big, others that are small, or that have different aspect radius. So the thing is that actually they learned at each position uh, whether there was an object that had a certain scale with a certain aspect ratio and several configurations. So here, these are called anchors and are the ones, for instance, that you can see here. So they uh, specialized some parameters of the network for each of these possible configurations of objects, okay? So, and moreover, instead of, of just uh, like predicting whether there's an object or not, they also regressed uh, the bonding boxes. So if there's an object that the most uh, similar anchor is this one, they don't propose just this bonding box. They also provide a regression of the coordinates to prove, okay? So this is what they did, and with this they could improve a lot, uh, like the, the time for test time, and you can see they the speed up. Um, that they maintained also performance, as you can see with the metric of mean average precision for the Pascal data set. So actually, these uh, same people did another approach, which is called Masker CNN, that is the, uh, the state of the art nowadays that it's exactly the same as faster CNN, but with an additional branch that um, segmented uh, the object inside the bonding box. So instead of just giving a bonding box for each object in the image, they gave a bonding box and also the segment. And learning both tasks at the same time gave uh, better performance for both tasks. So this was also a great contribution and this is nowadays like the, the algorithm that it's used for these kind of, of problems. So now I'm going to talk about the proposal free method. So see that until now I've been talking about methods that uh, have some kind of algorithm that uh, determines which are the regions where probably there's an object in there, okay? You see that in faster CNN, for instance, uh, you, like, you predict regions in all the image, but finally you're just gonna train your classifier network with the top images, with the top regions, sorry. So you're actually choosing wisely which regions to, to train your classifier with. So now you will see that with proposal free methods, what you do is the contrary, so you analyze all regions. So at the beginning we said, uh, this is too intensive because there are many positions, there are many scales, and uh, this would be too much. But the thing is that if your classifier is fast enough, you can go for it. And that's exactly what happens nowadays because CNNs uh, on modern hardware like GPUs can be parallelized. So now it's possible to do exactly that and to analyze all these possible configurations. And that's why now uh, these uh, methods that are consist of a single stage uh, are like acquiring importance. So the first one that did this was YOLO, you only look once. And what they did, it's like a similar approach to, to faster CNN. So given an image for each position of the image, they predict some bonding boxes. And at the same time, um, for each position of the image, they predict which is the most probable uh, class category. So here if there's a dog, so the place where there's a dog, the most probable class, of course, is a dog, etc. So finally, they combine these two predictions that they have, the one from the proposals and the one from the, um, from the category, and they consider all of them, and then uh, finally they just do this process of non-maximal separation and a score threshold and obtain their result, okay? So actually, how is 
this done. So you have your image, and then you have a convolutional neural network and with some fully connected layers at the end. So what they do is, um, for each position of uh, the image, they predict several bonding boxes, okay, uh, that are possible objects that might be in the image. The thing is that if, for instance, um, the pixel that belongs, that the pixel that is on the, in the center of each object, for instance, of this um, dog, should be responsible for the bonding box of the dog. And imagine there are several uh, objects that are placed in the same uh, pixel. So uh, several uh, bonding boxes should be obtained from the same position. That's why we are obtaining uh, several of them. So if we just do, for instance, two bonding boxes per each position, what we would like uh, to predict is a volume like this. So imagine that the grid of your image is seven by seven, okay? So at each of these seven by seven, you predict bonding boxes, and we decide to predict two bonding boxes. For each of these um, bonding boxes, we need the four coordinates and also a confidence score saying uh, how probable actually uh, is that that bonding box contains an object because, of course, there are positions of the image that won't contain any object. And then we also need as many channels to predict as many channels per each position of your grid of the class category. So uh, if we want to know in any position whether there's a cat, a bird, a TV, or whatever class category you're training your algorithm. Okay, so this is the output of YOLO. And actually, this approach uh, of, of um, like uh, doing a lot, doing everything at once, like uh, predicting objects for all positions and then uh, just uh, post-processing them. Uh, they also did this in single-shot multi-box detector that instead of uh, predicting bonded boxes for a, a single stage of your network, like this here, you see that you have your convolutional neural network and at this stage they predict the, the bonding boxes. What they did in single-shot multi-box detector is to predict this at multiple scales. So at different stages of your convolutional neural network, you train these predictors. Why did they do that? This is because the, the convolutional stages at the end of your network uh, are, um, have a wider uh, field of view of your image, so they see a bigger input uh, patch of, of your image. So they are able to detect, for instance, bigger objects. So what they did is to specialize the last layers to detect big objects. And the first layers that are the ones that detect local features will be the ones that will be specialized for uh, small objects, for instance. And that's exactly what they did, and they achieved better performance. So actually, these people from YOLO uh, did several versions. Uh, the, they did also this version two of YOLO that what they did is to add the state of the art techniques that were pro like that work well for their approaches, for instance. Uh, you know that for faster CNN, I told you that some parameters were specialized on certain aspect ratios or certain scales of objects. Uh, YOLO didn't do that. YOLO just trained uh, an algorithm and said, okay, give me two bonding boxes for each position, but without any restriction. So this actually was worse than restricting to learn some parameters specialized for certain scales or certain um, aspect ratio. So they added this feature. They also did, for instance, a multi-scale prediction. This means that uh, instead of just giving um, the image in one scale and giving the predictions, they uh, rescale the image several times. They forward this into the network and finally merge the results. So these are like tricks that made them improve the performance. And they also did uh, even a third version that it's well, YOLO version three, I, three sorry. <laughs> that what they did is to predict that at several parts of the network, just as the this algorithm did. Okay, you can check these papers if you want more information. But the idea is the same: is that they do it all at once without a proposal network, and then choosing the best localizations and just work on those. The thing is that uh, typically the the state of the art uh, were the proposal based methods uh, because. Um, they analyze just the best regions and then they just work with them. So these people from RetinaNet uh, analyze this and, and observe that the problem with these algorithms that analyze all possible positions and all possible scales and aspect ratios was that there was a lot of imbalance on your data. So of course there are 
a lot of more positions that won't have any object than positions that actually have an object. So this kind of imbalance is really what makes the problem more difficult. So these people from RetinaNet, what they did is to change their laws when training the network so that they gave more importance to those positions that actually contained an object and they gave less importance to the other positions. So like this, they could uh, achieve to, to match performance to the, the proposal-based methods and this is the first algorithm that achieved that. So finally, here you can see like a graph of the average precision on the COCO dataset. That is one of the datasets that I showed you at the beginning uh, in relation with the inference time. And you can see that, uh, for instance, YOLO, if you want to train a fast algorithm, YOLO is the one because it's very fast. But if you want to reach a good performance, it's better to use RetinaNet. And yeah, so this is a summary. So to distinguish the, these two kind of methods, the proposal-based and the proposal-free, yeah, and that's all. You have any question?